Okay, again into the channel. There it goes. Watch close because they're pretty quick at the moment. He goes go and then he's on. Look, easy as that. Again, a blistering run for such a small fish. I know it's not a big fish, I can tell by the weight, but a good fish. It takes a bit of skill. It looks really easy, um, float fishing like this. The key is the balance of the split shot. I'm here at Garrett Road Bridge again and it's slack water that it's one of those days on the swan where we there's hardly any tide <clears throat> but the tide is running that way slightly so what I'm doing is I'm just gently trotting the float letting it drift down with what little current there is and you can see hardly any uh, and I'm letting it drift there I missed a bite I think there but and there you are we're on yeah, let it drift towards the concrete piles where the fish, they are always there when the water's moving and they stop when the water stops. Anyway, you know, not a big fish, but I'm here to try something out and it's working pretty well. Get him in and get him put back. I'm fishing with a barbless hook, by the way, so if I give him slack line, he might even come off. <clears throat> and another one similar size this is the problem when you hit a school or shoal of brim they're often similar sizes and the larger fish tend to be in small shoals and quite solitary anyway yeah once again you can see roughly 26 20 just 26 27 if you stretched it typical of what i'm catching at the moment Now sometimes they, they're pretty adept at brim, at picking bait. They have peg-like teeth, um, which they use to um, scrape barnacles and other small mollusks off the, um, off the structure. So they're pretty adept at plucking the bait off. You would think it'd be the opposite. They don't suck it, they just pluck it off. And, and sure enough, look, the float didn't even twitch and yet the bait is gone. So we'll give it another go. That one caught me napping. I uh, <laughs> didn't even have the bail arm open. I was just wiping the sweat off me. It was pretty warm and it went. Uh, again, you know, a game fish, but not very big. Um, let's get him in. Let's have another go. <clears throat> I've just flipped it behind the boat. And there you go. And that's how quick it was. And let's hope we've got that, the float going down. It's not a big fish. I'm right in amongst a shoal and it's a biter cast and if I was alert and not tired it'd be a fisher cast. Another one, you know these are about 25, just under 25 in some cases, game little fish. Um, but let's get this one in and get it released. Yeah, You can see, look, in the lip and um, I'm using a barbless hook I think I've mentioned. so. Sometimes if you give it slack, they come off. There it goes. Another one. This one's <clears throat> probably a little bit better than the others. But again, see. So the challenge now is, do I stay here or do I move? And, you know, if you're looking for bigger fish and you're hitting nothing but smaller ones, you have to confront the brutal truth you are unlikely to catch a large fish when there's a shoal of smaller ones like this they're nearly always the same size not always but it's a really good rule of thumb so i'll fish a couple more casts and then i'm going to move okay again into the channel there it goes watch close because they're pretty quick at the moment he goes go and then he's on look easy as that Again, a blistering run for such a small fish. 
I know it's not a big fish, I can tell by the weight, but a good fish. It takes a bit of skill, it looks really easy, um, float fishing like this. The key is the balance of the split shot, uh, and to use a smaller float as possible, because then the fish feel less resistance. Actually, this fish isn't too bad. Um, anyway, we'll get him in and get him back. So there you go, I was pretty much right, 26. Yeah, you could squeeze 27 if you were feeling greedy. But just look at the condition of this fish. Shiny, bright, and we're right up river here. They're usually a bit darker up this far, but uh, in great condition. Anyway, uh, don't like to keep them out of the water, as you know, not too long. But let's get him back. Nice. And another one. Actually, the reason I've just put my camera on is this one is slightly bigger. Um, I actually fished a different channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to another channel in the hope that maybe there's something a bit bigger. This is not a bad fish as you can see. Well over 25, probably about 26, 27. Maybe anyway, I'll get him in and release him. Well there you go, he's a chunky little fish. Just over 27 actually to the tail. And they're fat and healthy, you know, this time of year. They're in great condition. So we'll put him back. Okay, so what I've done, for those that fish Garrett Road Bridge, um, the bridge piles are actually numbered by cross member. Um, so I'm now at number 16. I can tell you historically, the biggest fish come to me between 16 and 12. Historically, now I don't know how significant that is, but that, that's one of my learn is I do fish here a lot as you know so so I've just been fishing there I'm, I've now moved up I'm going to when I swing around I'm going to fish between 17 and 16 and 16 and 15 now so let's see how we go and there we go <laughs> my old friend the grunter my day would not be complete without one number 16 now this is an interesting point I regularly catch at least one grunter and here at Garrett Road it is always around number 16. So that's not a good sign. Anyway, let's get rid of him and then fish on. So in it goes, in between 16 and 15, there's the float. Not much happening and I'm not hopeful after that grunter, I have to be honest. But let's see, as it approaches the the pile here. You can see now the flow has almost stopped. Now, when this happens and there's nothing happening, you must check the bait because, as I've said, they're very adept at stealing the bait. Yep, and we've got another one. And look at it running for the piles. Look, that's what they do. Now this is high risk fishing because when you're in between, if you get a decent one, if they get round it, you're lost because the barnacles will surely snap you. This is a very dogged fish. And actually quite a reasonable size this one. Look at that. Well, there you go. So there you go. I fished right inside. It is high risk, um, but it's paid off. This is actually a very good fish. So I'll get the net and uh, measure him up. He started to come to life when it saw the net. This is actually a very decent fish, and I'm very pleased with that one. I, um, so it just proves, you know, change location just slightly and a slight change in tactic, which I'll talk about in a moment. Let's get him released and measured up. Um, in fact, I'll film the, the release. Here's the barbless hook just in the corner of the mouth, and look how easy that comes out. 
Now, you know, you might think that's high risk and you could lose fish, but I am, I am catching and releasing after all. Um, this is probably high 20s, low 30s, we shall see. Well, what do you know? There you go, 31. Nice little fish. Good. Okay, let's just talk about that last fish uh, and reflect for a second. The whole reason I have this channel is the three objectives which I talk about all the time. Shared knowledge and learnings, shared experience and enjoyment, enjoying fishing. So the learning here I was in amongst a shoal of sort of 25 sized bream, a couple were a bit bigger, not much. Um, but the brutal truth which you sometimes have to confront is you're unlikely to catch anything much bigger in that shoal. So I moved to a different channel, not far, only, only three channels in fact. Uh, but I did two other things, I adjusted the depth slightly and then I went high risk in, inside the channel where often the larger fish do reside when, when you find them. Uh, and it paid off and that was a pretty good fish in the end so I'm going to have another go. Now I'm not very far inside this time but far enough and we'll see what happens. What was really curious about that fish with it being a larger fish the bite was so tentative. The float barely moved at first and I knew there was something gone and just as I raised my rod tip slightly it held on and I, I just had enough of a hook hold to bring it in. So I don't think that's far enough you see down the channel. If I go against the piles maybe we're in with a chance. So, so I'll, um, I'll, I'll give it another cast in a second. So there we are, down in the middle of the channel once again, in between the piles. Now, that was a very tentative bite, very delicate. So what they will do, they'll take it and they'll, they'll run straight for the pile either side. Now, if I'm lucky, he'll run <laughs> right to left. If I'm unlucky, he'll go that way. And if he gets in there, I'm in trouble. But the skill is getting his head up as soon as he's hooked. There, look, see, there was a slight nudge, very tentative. You just got to watch it now. <laughs> it's such a relaxing fall. Now I have a fit. There you go, he's gone. Oh, and I missed it. That's because I was yapping. Um, Anyway, I'm going to get that fish again. Now, the good thing about this is if they take the bait clean, no resistance, really good chance that they, they will not have been spooked. So that fish will be there, uh, smacking his lips right now because he's just had a free meal. So with any luck, I'll offer him another burger and he'll take it. So in goes another hamburger for fish. He's had a freebie. There he goes. And yes, he's on. Oh, and he's looking straight in. You see? And he's off. Not a very big fish, that one. But he was straight in and went straight for the piles. I, I hope that's come out on film. That's classic, um, a classic brim run. Well, what a stunning evening. And another fabulous day on the river. <clears throat> uh, the GoPro died, unfortunately. The battery ran out. Fortunately, I had a lead with me and I have got a USB charger I've got a couple of USB chargers fitted on the pocket rocket so I was able to um, get just enough of a charge I think to do this close out um, look I didn't get the specimen brim I was after but um, but I caught so many fish and you can't ask for more than that really uh, mostly around 27 a couple 30 nothing really bigger than that I'm not going to exaggerate but a fantastic day on our magnificent Swan River. 
Uh, the sun has just gone down, so I need to get to the ramp to the suite. Um, the only thing is, it is a five knot limit, so um, anyway, enough jabbering. Uh, I've had a fabulous day, uh, got some good footage. I'll put together a video. Hope you enjoy it. As always, stay well hooked. Well, it's a good fish and uh, yeah. yes, fish on. Feels pretty good. fish this one it's taking line I've got to keep him away from the structure look at the size of it fat healthy and I think that's pushing 40 oh man it's another good one whoa it's another good brim very very good fish it's not quite ready but I'll just see if I can ease him into the net he's in there you go. What a great fish.